أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مدل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوضا عظيما أما بعد First of all just a reminder to the brothers to please move up if you make room for your brother, Allah will make room for you on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, insha'Allah. Alhamdulillah, all praises to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most high, the most merciful, the most gracious, the most forgiving. He has no partners, and there is nothing like him, and he is like nothing we have ever seen. We glorify Allah and praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every single thing that we do. And we ask him and implore our Lord, our Creator, to send his peace and blessings and honor unto our beloved and noble and exalted Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah, we're gathered here for the, in a blessed gathering, a gathering with a very blessed atmosphere, the Jumu'ah gathering. And I want to remind myself and you first that when we gather for Jumu'ah, it's not like if it's, it's something that we don't, it's just something we do. We do it for a reason, because we know that there is benefit in it, that there is mercy in it, that there is barakah in it and hasanat in it, and we do it to get away from our hectic and busy lives. Our work life, our business life, our personal life, our school life, our home life, just for a few minutes, we can get off the Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat and get off social media and take a break from what's going on in the news and in the media and in society in general and cleanse ourselves. Not that any of us are dirty, but to cleanse ourselves in a spiritual way by drinking from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. I say drinking from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy because Jumu'ah in itself, this time that we are here right now in this masjid, all of us, you and I, is a time of mercy. And this is a mercy in ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So alhamdulillah. Feel that contentment in your heart. And as, the, as I deliver a message and a reminder to you, I want my words to resonate in your mind. And I want one word to be in your mind as you listen to me speak right now to you. A word, rahmah. A word, mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want you to just think about that word. If there's just one word that sticks with you when you walk out of this masjid in just a few short moments, it will be rahmah, mercy, Allah's mercy. Rahmatan alameen. My dear beloved gathering, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us in Al-Quran very graciously and beautifully, Al-Rahman, Allama Al-Quran, خَلَقَ الْإِنسَانِ عَلَّمَهُ الْبَيَانِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls himself by the name Ar-Rahman, the most merciful. And when you study the Arabic language, you understand that Ar-Rahman, as, as, as it is written in the Qur'an, this is Sigha Mubalagha, a other form of Arabic language that falls into the form of consistency. So when we put the word Ar-Rahman, we say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is consistent with mercy. That mercy and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is consistency, there is a balance, there is a, there is a connection. And then we use the definite article in Arabic, the alif and lam, al, 
to say the most merciful. That's how beautiful the Quran is. The most merciful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no contest in His mercy. No competition in His mercy. None can compare in His mercy. Yes, we can all be merciful. You can be worse, merciful to your wife, or your wife can be merciful to your baby or your children, or you can be merciful to the non-Muslims, or you can be merciful to your neighbor. Alhamdulillah, that is mercy. And may Allah make us all merciful people. But Allah's mercy transcends that earthly meaning of mercy that we have. His mercy is not like our mercy. His mercy is on a whole another level that we only strive and pray to attain. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us, tells us He is the most merciful. Ar-Rahman. How is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most merciful? Have you ever asked yourself that? Have I ever asked myself that? How is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our Lord, our Creator, merciful? Allama al-Qur'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the Qur'an. He honored His own creation, you and I. He gave us the Qur'an to guide us, to keep us from going astray. Think about your lives without Qur'an. Think about a creation where there is no Qur'an. Where Qur'an is not there to guide you in the dark. And this is a very dark world we live in. It's a fact of life. It's a very dark and hard life. Think of how harder and darker it would have been without Qur'an, without that honor, that mercy that Allah has, has bestowed upon us. Allama al-Qur'an. If we did not have Qur'an, we would be like animals, we would be like barbarians. And we see that today. Don't we have barbarians and animals among us who look like human beings? But the way they act, their akhlaq. Why would we want to act like that? Why would you want to be part of a creation that does not follow Quran? Act like someone who does not have Quran in their life. Those are the people that do not have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. So Allah says, Allam al Quran, He taught the Quran. خلق الإنسان and then he created mankind. Allah subhanahu wa taala taught mankind the Quran and then he mentions that he created mankind. Alhamdulillah, he created us. Alhamdulillah, we are all existing because that's a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa taala as well. But why does Allah subhanahu wa taala he mentions Quran before he mentions the creation? Why does Allah subhanahu wa taala do this? Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, Allam al-Qur'an, he taught the creation the Qur'an, and then he mentions the creation to show us a lesson. That without Qur'an, the creation would not be a creation. It would not be a worthy creation. It would be a creation that does not meet the standard of being the real Ahl al-Qur'an. Many people today, they call themselves Ahl al-Qur'an. Ahl al-Hadith, Ahl al-Sunnah. But they don't understand the true meaning of Ahl al-Qur'an. To be true Ahl al-Qur'an, first you must remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. So he talks about that creation and says that without the Qur'an, you would not be Ahl al-Qur'an. Without this Qur'an, we would all be nothing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gave us, He is so merciful to us. He gave us Qur'an and He created us. That in itself shows how merciful, yet how, how powerful, yet how simple His mercy really is. That's why we praise Him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in a surah, a surah that is a sunnah to read on this day. Alhamdulillah allazi andala ala abdihi al-kitaba wa lam yaj'al lahu iwaja. Alhamdulillah, praise be to Allah. Perfect praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. الذي أنزل على عبده the one who sent down bestowed upon his servant his slave على عبده الكتاب the Quran why do we praise Allah subhanahu wa taala why do we thank him and pray five times a day to him why are we here in this masjid right now to praise Allah subhanahu wa taala why do we praise him because he sent down mercy upon us he sent down the Quran he made our lives easier he honored this creation. So we should all feel proud and happy. Yes, we should feel proud. Not an arrogant proud, but it's okay to feel proud. It's okay to be content and say, you know what? I am someone, I am a part of creation. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has honored me. My Lord, my God, 
the one who will never forsake me has honored me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes this type of creation in Al-Quran and He uses a beautiful word, Al-Muflihoon. Al-Muflihoon. In Saudi Arabia and in Egypt and Libya and anywhere in the Middle East, you find a people and you find people calling farmers Fallahoon. That Fallahoon in Arabic means farmer. People who graze grass and herd sheep and milk cows and have a farm and work in a farm, you call them Fallahoon. And Imam Al Qurtubi, rahimahullah, the great Mufassir of Islam, he said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah calls the believers Muflihoon. Why? Because they reap what they sow, because they are like farmers. Fallahoon, Muflihoon. They are like farmers that reap what they sow. And they reaped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. And what did they sow? Jannatul Firdaus. They sowed, they, they sowed success in this life and in the life hereafter. Brothers and sisters in Islam, children, my elders, my beloved gathering, what are we, what are we sowing? What are we reaping? Are we reaping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy? I think a more important question is, are we, are we, are we asking for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy? I know of several cases where people have said that, you know what, I'm not really trying anymore to be a Muslim because I've done too much things. I've done too much bad things. I have too much skeletons in my closet. I don't think I want to care anymore. Don't have that attitude. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never forsake his servant who asks him, for Jannatul Firdaus and asks him for forgiveness and for his mercy. Allah's mercy is unconditional. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told, told us himself, wa rahmati wasi'at kulla shay. And my mercy covers everything. Why would you want to cut yourself off from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy? Just because you have skeletons in your closet? Just because you have skeletons in your closet, every single person in this masjid, in this room, on these two floors, right now, brother or sister, children or elder, every single person is not perfect, they all have flaws, and we, every single one of us has skeletons in our closet. It's a fact of life. It's human nature. No one is perfect. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not create, it, create it, His creation perfect. Because He is the only thing that is perfect. Yet, why do you feel that just because you have skeletons in your closet, you can't ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for His mercy? Know that His mercy is there. All you have to do is ask Him for it and He will give it to you. Think about people who are in worse situations. Yet, they're asking for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. Reap what you sow. If you reap Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy, if you obey Him, if you worship Him, what do you have to fear in this life or the next? The great scholar of Islam, Ibn Jawzi rahimahullah, said, Inna dunya mazru'a. That this world is like a farm. People are like people, the people are, are like those who live in the badia, in the barren desert, the barren wasteland, desert, just sand. It's up to them to make something out of that. Just like how it's up to us to make something out of our lives. So brothers and sisters, I ask myself and I ask you first, what are we doing with our lives? Are we attaining Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy? Are we remembering it? When we look at our wife or our husband or our children or our job or what we have or what we don't have, are you remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy? Every second, we, every minute, we should be thinking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. So I remind you again, if there's one word, one thing, that I want you to walk away from this khutbah from, it's that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy is there, and it's up to you to get it. He is not far, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not far. So attain His mercy. Don't be inferior, and don't feel inferior to someone, just because you have done a bad thing, he hasn't or she hasn't. That does not mean Allah will forsake you. Worship Allah, and know that His mercy is there, and Allah will give you mercy just for remembering His mercy. That is how merciful our Lord is. Subhanallah. 
We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us part of that creation. That creation that has a high standard, that is worthy of the title of Ahl al-Qur'an. To make us a community and make us a society, a global Muslim ummah that is worthy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. Not because of what we are and who we are, but because of what we do that makes us who we are. What we do reflects if Allah will give us mercy or not. So ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, demand it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from the muflihun. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who Allah showers His mercy upon. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who we get mercy from Allah, yet we show mercy. Because this is what a Muslim is all about. Some people forget the basis of being a Muslim. The basis of being a Muslim is being a good person. How do you be a good person? Have mercy on people. Don't be arrogant. You can be proud and happy and content with something, but don't get arrogant. Treat people well. Talk to people well. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you mercy, insha'Allah. Aqulu qawli haza wa astaghfirullah lakum. Alhamdulillahi wa salatu wa salam wa ala rasulillahi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi yajma'een Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yasir li amri wa ahlu luqtatan min lisani yafahu qawli amma ba'd Alhamdulillah, I think we can all agree that just the, the memories of Ramadan is fading and the memories of Eid is fading and memories of iftar and suhoor and fasting are fading. It's been over three weeks since we celebrated Eid al-Fitr al-Mubarak. But I find it befitting that we can remind ourselves about mercy, seeing as Ramadan al-Mubarak was the month of mercy. And we remind ourselves and we are proud and happy and content when we are reminded about what we did in that month. Did you not fast in the month of Ramadan? Did you not eat suhoor and iftar in Ramadan? Did you not feel tired in Ramadan? Did your wives and, and, and did the wives and the sisters not slave in the kitchen in Ramadan? Did your children not go hungry and try their best to fast in Ramadan? Did you not come and pray taraweeh in Ramadan? That is not nothing, my dear gathering. That is not nothing. That is something to be a proud of. That is something to feel proud of. Something that you should feel a contentment in your hearts that you know what? You did Ramadan, you fasted Ramadan, you celebrated Eid, and you praised your Lord and worshipped your Lord as He should be worshipped. So I commend you all and congratulate you all because you have all done something good. I have done something good. Everyone has done something good in Ramadan. So we're reminded, and we feel that contentment. Is that not a part of mercy? We look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Al-Quran. When we just think about ourselves, we remember the global Muslim ummah. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy in them as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us beautifully in the Quran, إِنَّ هَذِهِ أُمَّتُكُمْ أُمَّةً وَاحِدًا فَأَنَا رَبُّكُمْ فَاعْبُدُونَ Verily, this Muslim ummah, this global Muslim community, the people on the right path, this creation that deserves my mercy and worships me, verily, this ummah is under one banner, and that banner is لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ مُحَمَّدُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ And alhamdulillah, we saw that. In Ramadan, we were not just part of Masjid al Siddiq or any other masjid, but we were part and we felt proud that we were part of a global Muslim Ummah living the true way of life. But then we remember, even though we had a harsh Ramadan or even though you felt some discomfort, we remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us that mercy 
that he has not yet given it to other people, but he will, inshallah. What I mean to say is people in dif different situations. Imagine you, we were living <coughs> in Bangladesh, in the city of Cox's Bazar, the largest refugee camp in the world. Monsoon rains are destroying homes. People don't have anything to eat. 1,700 babies by the end of this month will be born as a result of rape and sex crimes. Yet, when journalists went there to see how they were coping with Ramadan and their fast, <coughs> when journalists went over there to see how they were coping with their fast, what did they find? The Muslims were happy. They were willing to share whatever little iftar they have with their guests. Imagine being in Gaza, in Palestine. Our brothers and sisters starving. 97% of the water there is unclean. You cannot drink it. So what did the people in Gaza do in Ramadan? How did they eat iftar and suhoor? They went down to the seashore and prepared their iftar and their suhoor there. And they were happy to share with their guests, the journalists who went there. Imagine fasting and being a Muslim in Kashmir. Where when you go in the mountains, you find people living in tents. And when you go into their tents, they have absolutely nothing but some tea. And they give you all their tea. And they insist that you drink it. What is the sisters in Islam? Isn't Allah so merciful? Don't you see the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How he's bestowed his mercy upon these people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never forsake someone just because they have done a bad thing or just because they feel like they're just too bad. It's no, it's end of the line for me. I'd rather just go to Jahannam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never forsake you. He did not forsake Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How would he forsake Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's ummah when the ummah is asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it? Allah loves that. Walk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will run to you. Don't cut yourself off from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy, it is there. And at the same time, learn mercy yourself. Put that mercy in yourself. Next time you get angry at your spouse, or your son, or your daughter, or your brother, or sister, or your elders, or anybody, learn that mercy yourself. Because if we are a merciful creation, then that means we are the best creation. Because there is no one more merciful than a Muslim. Imagine being one of those children locked in a cage on the southern border, removed from their parents. Don't you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy? Don't you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save the creation who worships Him? Let us remember this. And as you walk out of this masjid in a few moments, just remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy is there and it will never ever go. So don't ever feel like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not forgive you and have mercy on you, inshaAllah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us, to preserve us, to raise us and elevate us to a higher level of spirituality, a higher level of iman, a higher level of understanding of this deen, a higher level of understanding of the Qur'an and for him to make us among the muflihoon, among the people who have attained success that insha'Allah every single one of us will attain insha'Allah. Aqulu qawli haza astaghfirullah halakum aqeem as-salam. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Wal-asri inna الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر